What's up everyone? Welcome into the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. It is training camp season. Football is back. Tim May, Spencer Holbrook, just wrapped up with Ryan Day, just wrapped up watching a little bit, a little glimpse, Tim. Snippets. Snippets of that, of that first practice. And I gotta say, it doesn't feel like football. It's really, really hot, but it still feels like football. It's finally back. Tim, how are we feeling about football? No, it's really funny though, because what you just said, it always reminds me when it's warm up here, just think what it's like in Miami, <laughs> uh, Florida, Alabama, Texas, probably 102 today in Austin, etc. So heat is relative, right? Yeah. Uh, bottom line is though, you know, you kind of miss that, those those days when you got to be out there and they come running out, you know, like yeah. they're coming running out of the tunnel. I mean, it's symbolic as all get out, but uh, that's what you miss today of seeing those guys take the field for the first time. But they've been they, they they've been ipso facto practicing all summer in yep. some form or fashion. They're out there running around. They're so much more in shape than 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 teams 30 years ago. It's crazy when they first show up. I agree. Like I, like I was telling somebody, Mickey Mirati, you know, the strength and conditioning guy, the football performance guy, he's kind of like walking around out there and I'm just going, I was on the radio talking about this. I see he's kind of admiring his handiwork. You know, yeah. you look at JT Tui Molowau, looks different like a different guy. Tyleek Williams has lost 20 pounds. Jack Sawyer looks like a different man out there. I mean, he's grown up so much. Uh, even Devin Brown, he posted Posted on his website, his dad did. His body has changed. So that's the first thing you notice is what really kind of really good shape this football team is in. Number two, you notice how quick they're running around, how fast they are, even the big guys. And then on top of that, you notice like right out of the gate, hey, this offensive line coach, he's using the sled a hell of a lot more than I remember anybody else using it over the last. He's many actually years. using it. They're using the sled, the blocking sled. I know for a lot of old timers, that really gets them going when they hear the sleds being used. But uh, you know, we'll see where that goes. But but the bottom line is, it's just kind of cool to see football preseason camp underway. I think the goal of this preseason for us as video is not to oversell and not to undersell. I think we're going to try to be right in the middle. Uh, but I can't help but gush over what I saw from the defensive line, and that's where my first observation turns to. Um, last year, it looked like a lot of guys, we, we made the comments, a lot of guys had gotten bigger. A lot of guys looked like they had really taken advantage of the weight program and, and the cafeteria up there, and they looked bigger. Well, I saw a bunch of guys who just look like they're in shape, whether that means they're getting bigger. For some guys, that is what it means. When you talk about Jack Sawyer, when you talk about JT Tumaloa, some guys look like they're thinned down. Yeah. With, with Tyleek Williams, with Teron Vincent, who I thought looked really good in that yeah. first session. With a guy like Kenyatta Jackson, who's a really slender guy, but he's really agile and can move. Uh, I could go on and on on these defensive Did you line. say Jerron Cage? Jerron Cage, he looks who, that looks, way. who looks like he might be able to run a little faster than we saw him running down the sideline against Penn State in that scarlet out. But I'm going to use your term. The bottom line is the defensive line doesn't look like it got bigger. It looks like it's in better shape. And whether that means guys slimmed down, whether that means guys got bigger, that's a good sign for Ohio State because yeah. you don't want every guy to be the same. And I think that's, like I said, where the observation starts for me is that's a unit that needs to be better. It knows it needs to be better. Larry Johnson knows he needs to be better. The defensive linemen have taken you know that in stride this entire offseason. And that is a, a big deal. If you have those guys in the trenches be able to get back to that level, you've got a chance to be a dominant defense right from the, right from the line of script. Yeah, and the story I'm going to do later down the road is, um, before I talk to Jim Knowles about it, I probably shouldn't even let it put it out there, but, uh, you know, the interesting thing for me is whether they have a fella come out of the gate on that defensive line like, like Chase Young did, like the Bosa brothers did, that just kind of grabs everybody's attention right off the get-go. It changes everything about preparation for the Buckeyes down the road. They didn't have that last year. They didn't have that one guy that you had to just, you knew you had to take out of the of the situation or you were in a, in a, in a lot of trouble. And you know, there's something to be said for like having that marquee dude up front uh, setting the tone. And, you know, we'll see if one of those guys develops, <clears throat> especially in that 425 where you're you're going to have that floater, you know, the, the Leo, the Leo guy, maybe sometimes, maybe not. But just, you know, can a Jack Sawyer become that guy. You've got to know where he is at every moment on the field, and then it changes the way the offense has to like uh, adjust to things. That's what I'm curious about seeing over the next three or four weeks is somebody really maybe stepping up and then rising to that occasion against Notre Dame. Speaking of guys who could potentially step up, it looked like you know, on that defense, Josh Proctor was healthy and yep. out there. Cameron Brown, who missed a little bit of spring, was touch and go. He was out there full go. Latham <clears throat> Ransom, uh, I, I can't believe that He's Latham back. Ransom is already back. I right. know it's been seven months, but guys, like, 
to, to come back that quickly is yeah. is a crazy feat uh, for anybody. Josh Proctor had a lot of build-up time to this. He got hurt in September surgery straight after that and, and looked like he was making progress in the spring. Lathan Ransom snapped his leg in half at the Rose Bowl yeah. and, right. and is now on the practice field. Those guys, are those guys, all three of them that I just named, are going to be factors. It's all about the knitting, man, when it comes to putting those things back together, as you know, and some some are, every injury is different. Yeah. I'm talking about <clears throat> Josh Proctor and him had basically the same injury, uh, but they're not the same injury because you can have a, <clears throat> a twist you know, twist break or a uh, just a snap break, and uh, <clears throat> you, you don't want to get gruesome. But Lathan Ransom clearly looks like he's ready to go. They're going to limit, as you're talking about, they're going to limit his participation and bring him along uh, according to Ryan Day. But um, boy, that just uh, adds to that defensive depth. And when you get 15 minutes to watch 110 guys, it's kind of hard to, to really see exactly what's going on. But I, I caught a glimpse of Lathan Ransom going up for a ball, uh, you know, in just individual drills. Yeah. And you, have, you have to go high point the ball. And he went up and high pointed the ball and came down on the leg that he snapped, just one leg. Yeah. And that's 205, 210 pounds coming down on that leg. And he just looked like he had never had an injury. And so that's one thing that I'm just going to keep tucked away in my brain uh, for the next couple weeks as we go through this because I really think if he and if he's healthy, if Josh Proctor's healthy, and if Cameron Brown is healthy, you're talking about a dangerous, dangerous secondary. Uh, moving over to the offensive side of the ball, but they're going to be helped out a lot if they, if that guy comes along, like I like I pointed out earlier, where you've got to worry about the the rush. Oh yeah, yeah, because for sure. that's what teams a couple times, several times last year didn't have to do. Yeah, and so you know that defense looks like it's starting to come along. I think you know I'm not going to say we yeah. have anything answered because it was one practice and it was 15 minutes of watching. Yeah, it, it wasn't even football. Yeah, but it was just kind of drill. It was work. sort of football. But you do you can start to formulate a few different little opinions from seeing who who took the offseason and who didn't take the chance in the offseason. Now, if we move over to the offensive side of the ball, I saw a couple guys who did take the offseason and, and completely run with it. You talk about Josh Fryer in his in his progress back, who looks like he could be the, an answer in the second team offensive line that we all have our eyes on. I saw five offensive linemen who are going to start that look like a real bona fide offensive line that I you know I love saying it that could win the Joe Moore award. This isn't knocking anybody ball. from last year. But no. I, but I like Donovan Jackson and Matt Jones. Oh yeah. At the guards. I just there's just something about those guys. Matt Jones looks like somebody would just knock you on your rear end. Donovan Jackson is an is a you know Matt Jones is an athlete, but Donovan Jack just exudes athleticism. I mean, along with being tough, you know, and getting after it, quick step, maybe pulling, things like that. I mean it's just yeah, it's a totally different look. But then they split up into guards and tackles, Tim. And yeah. that's where the light really started to go off because there were five or six, maybe seven tackles, and then there were you know, what seemed like 40 guards over there practicing. And, and you, just, you start to really see the discrepancies in the positional breakdown. All the true freshmen were with the tackles, as somebody pointed out at the press conference. Uh, a lot of, there was a ton of guards, not a lot of tackles, and, you know, not, Dewan Jones and Paris Johnson are going to be really, really good, I think, on the edges for Ohio State. But you know, you don't want this. To, you don't want to even talk about it. But if something does happen to either of those guys, it is, it is not a good situation for Ohio State. And that's not where yet. that's a big observation to make. But it's also an imperative one just to 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 let people know, like this is an offensive line that needs help at tackle. Yeah. Now, depth CJ, wise. Yeah, depth wise, exactly. C.J. Stroud and and the weapons. We haven't even said his name yet. I can't believe we can go. Well, we've, we've been saying it forever. But you know what C.J. Stroud gives you. You know Kyle McCord is the backup, and you know Devin Brown's the third string, and that's all you really need. We didn't. Even, I didn't even really pay attention to the quarterbacks. The wide receivers, however, I had my eye on because yeah. that's a unit that I'm going to keep talking about it. It intrigues me much more than it intrigues a lot of people because Jackson Smith and Jigba is the only bona fide proven playmaker in that room. Marvin Harrison Jr. obviously had the three touchdowns in the Rose Bowl. You got to make sure that you do that beyond one game. Julian Fleming needs to prove a lot. Cameron Babb, finally healthy. That's a good sign. Mecca Ibuka hasn't proven a lot. And so there's a lot of talent in there, but it's a lot of unproven. Yeah, but you get, you know, you don't get to prove yourself until you get the shot. I mean, oh, yeah. last year they had they had two first round draft picks, two high first round draft picks in that room, along with Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, those other guys aren't going to get to play much, and a lot of times when they got into the game, they weren't throwing the ball anyway. I mean, I mean, I thought the Rose Bowl was so valuable 
to this team, to this offense, to C.J. Stroud from the standpoint of what Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Egbuka, for example, right out of the gate brought to the program in a game they had to come from behind to win, meaning they've already gotten their feet wet in a big time game. They're not just walking out there you know, lollygagging freshmen. I mean, they've worked, you know, the, the, the videos of Marvin Harrison Jr. working out in the offseason are legendary now. I yeah. mean, it's crazy. Uh, so I think they're more proven than some people think. It's just like, you know, the bottom line is unleash them, you know, and uh, and now, you know, they're going to get that shot. But it was so, it was, it was just, it just meant so much for them to get to play in that Rose Bowl and play a big part in that Rose Bowl. Exactly. I mean, because, you know, the guys that, that stayed out of that game. And so I don't think they're as worried about that as, as maybe some people think. A guy that flashed to me, though, in the spring I want to see is Kion Grays for, Grays, for example. I thought he had some moments, and we'll see if he gets more chances. There's an example of a guy. You know, they need uh, Fleming, Julian Fleming to finally have that complete year and not be banged up. We'll see how that goes along. I guess I'm not as concerned about wide receiver as I am just interested in what the rotation looks like because you could run out there with Jackson yeah. Smith and Jigba, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Mecca and Buka and make it just like last year where those three don't come off the field. They're talented enough. But then you've got Julian Fleming. If Cameron Babb's healthy, CJ Stroud once said that he's the best receiver on the roster. Yeah. You know, if he's healthy. And so you just wonder if if he can stay at that level. That would level. be a bonus if he stays healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, I think Ohio State knows that and they're looking at it as that right now. But he's also a team captain and a leader who you need in a season that you know that you expect to win a national championship and yeah then you go to the, the freshman like you said keon grays and caleb brown i took yeah. a note caleb brown was back there returning punts he is electric fast yeah and keon grays is a guy who impressed us like you said in the spring a lot of talent there obviously brian hartland does a better job than anybody in the country regardless of position at recruiting a lot of talent there what does the rotation look like is kind of what I want to know. Yeah. We're not going to know that for a while, though. I mean, you'll you know, know that. The Notre Dame game you may, might not even know that may reveal time. a little bit because, like, you know, even Ryan Day pointed that out when we were talking to him last week in Chicago, in Chicago, in Indianapolis. That was a Freudian in Indianapolis that, uh, you know, you go into that first game when it's, a, when it's Notre Dame, when it's a game that is so huge. You got to go with the guys you pretty much trust yep. to get the job done. The depth will come. The depth development will come in those next several weeks after that, probably. But they're not going to play any games, so to speak, against Notre Dame. They're going to go after it with their proven dudes. Took a big note of that when Ryan Day said that. We need to figure out who can beat Notre Dame because right. I think it's the opposite approach as they took last year when even at Minnesota and then against Oregon, they were still working. Yeah, but out. he knew Minnesota. He knew that was a snake in the oh, grass. Yeah. But he kept trying to warn everybody and nobody was paying attention. But but the point I'm trying to make here is that last year they were okay with going in with an unsettled depth chart, letting the defensive guys prove themselves. They had really, to. Really rotating a yeah. lot of guys in and seeing who fit. This year it's, hey, who can beat Notre Dame and who can yeah. open up the season kicking butt? Yeah. And and they, they don't have an option because it's either beat Notre Dame or fall out of college football playoff contention the first week of the season almost. Obviously you can work your way back in, but takes a big hit you know what I'm trying yeah to say. I know I know it's, but uh, but it, you know yeah so, everything's relative go ahead though. yeah so it's a it's a way different approach that they're taking this fall compared to last fall. and you already see that with practice one now again these are observations from 15 minute practice window and 35 minutes with Ryan Day on the very first practice of training camp I'm not going to take too much out of it but there are a couple things that you can really take away and, and start to put into your uh, memory thoughts, bank. Yeah, and, and thoughts about what's to come in this training camp. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I keep telling everybody, I'm repeat it again, they're going to figure out a way to get Evan Pryor on the field with the ball in his hands, whether it's catching the ball, running, running a straight uh, running back plays, running uh, um, uh, jet sweeps, whoever, who, who knows what they're going to get to. He flashed again today in my mind and uh, there's a guy they definitely are scheming for. Last thing before we get out that of here. That will make them look different from a year ago. Absolutely. Last thing before we get out of here, Tim, uh, from me is that Ryan Day made a note that a guy can't just flash. We like to say the word who, you know, ask him who flashes, who does this. And Ryan Day made the point finally. And but it, I used that word when I asked him the question. It's you know? starting to make sense. He says, you can't just flash. If you flash, that means you're inconsistent because you just do it once or twice. I think you got to uh, become yeah. consistent with it. And I'm going to start to you got to become a strobe. That. Yep. I'm going to start to kind of use that as a guide to not just, hey, 
this guy's flashing, but hey, this guy looks consistently good. And so as, as we watch another practice window on Friday, um, you know, we can start to see who's consistently catching our eye and who's just doing it one day at a time. And so that's just one thing that I'm, again, that I'm going to tuck away as we as we wrap up things here inside the Woody Hayes Athletic yeah. Center. Yeah, I've got a little thing coming on down, down the road with us, you know, in the next several days about players who other players say should really make some strides here in preseason camp because they looked really good in the spring and have just kept kept doing that through the through the uh, summer workouts and stuff. So we'll get we'll get into the flash to strobe aspect of things. Practice one in the books at Ohio State. Ryan Day spoke to the media. We've got full coverage at LettermanRow.com. The full press conference on the Letterman Row YouTube channel. If you want to chat about it? Come join us in the Letterman Lounge. I will be there. Uh, one dollar for an entire year right now for Letterman Row. Sign up. That's a pretty good deal, Tim. You can read. Yeah, that's Tim's, pretty good deal. You can read Tim's content. You can read my content. Everything we bring to the table at Letterman Row. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, signing up. We will see you Friday morning back here for practice number two.